Good afternoon, dear students. Today we have a demo lesson which is devoted to the bank and its classes. First of all, we have to look at the glossary of the lesson. Intermediary, Vasitache, Deposit, Omonad, Interest, Foyers, Ownership, Mulgdarlik, Mortgage, Ipateka, Merchant, Savdogar, The Flow of Money, Pulokama, The Routine Duties, Muntazam Vazifalar, Soul, Yagona, Surplus Money, Ortchapul, Cash, Naktpul, Foreign Exchange, Horaji Valuta, Long Term, Uzormutatli, and short term, skamdatli. When you think of a bank, the first thing that comes to your mind might be the institution that holds your checking or saving account. But there are several different types of banks, all serving different needs. And today we have to look at the differences between the types of banks. The first task of the lesson is think about the definition of a bank. What is a bank? A bank is a financial institution that acts as a financial intermediary between consumers who wish to deposit money and consumers who wish to borrow money. If you look at the functions of the banks, we can clearly see that people and firms deposit and save money in a bank, for example, in the central bank. Then the central bank lends money to people and firms, and consequently people and firms buy goods and services with the money they have borrowed. How do banks make a profit? Of course, the first thing is charging interest on loans, charging fees for the provision of financial services, and of course, all of the banks making investments. And now we have to see the difference between types of banks. The types of banks are divided on the basis of ownership, on the basis of domicile, and on the basis of function. Types of bank on the basis of ownership, the banks are classified on the basis of ownership into two categories. All of us know that we have public sector banks and private sector banks. Types of bank on the basis of ownership. Public sector banks. These are banks which are owned and controlled by the government. And private sector banks. The banks owned by corporations. They are called, of course, private sector banks. The banks are divided on the basis of domicile into two categories – domestic banks and foreign banks. And now we have to look at the difference between domestic and foreign banks. As the term itself tells for its definition, these banks registered and incorporated within the country, of course, they are called domestic banks. The banks which have their origin and head offices in the foreign countries are called foreign banks. Classification of banks on the basis of function. There are several types of banks, such as central banks, commercial banks, exchange banks, saving banks, agriculture banks industrial banks, 
cooperative banks, mortgage banks, investment, merchant, export and import banks. But I found some different sources where you can see other types of banks. Besides the banks which I mentioned above, you can see that there are retail banks, specialized banks, and some other types of banks. And now we have to look at each type of bank separately. For example, central bank. As we know, we have central banks in Uzbekistan and we know definitely the functions of the central bank. All of us know that central bank is a bank of banks. Every civilized country now has its own central bank. The primary function of the central bank is to regulate the flow of money and credit in order to promote efficiency, stability and growth in the country. And, dear students, there are some functions of central banks, such as sole right of note issue. It means that the central bank issues money and there is the only right of the central bank to issue money in the country. Banker, agent and advisor to the government. Banker to commercial banks. Control of credit. Clearing agent. Lender of last resort. Custodian of foreign exchange reserve. Development role. And there are some other functions of central banks. And I will remind you that the lender of last resort, we discussed the last lesson. So I can remind that when the country faces the crisis in economy, the central bank acts as a lender of last resort. It means that the central banks gives a credit to a government. The role of the central bank. In many countries, the central bank is owned by the government and run by a public corporation. The oldest central bank is the Bank of Sweden, which is established in 1668. The second oldest is the Bank of England, which is established in 1694. And now we have to discuss the second type of banks which is commercial bank. Commercial banks are those banks which are engaged in performing the routine duties of banking business. They collect surplus money and make loans and advances in the form of overdrafts, cash credit and discounting bills of exchange. They also provide special financial services and agency services. Commercial banks, in short, are considered the lifeblood of the economic society. Functions of commercial banks are basic functions, secondary functions. The next type of banks is exchange banks. Exchange banks are mainly deal with the international trade. If you look at the title of the banks, it means that the banks are busy with the exchange of currency. These banks take the responsibility of settlement of foreign exchange and arrange of foreign business. These functions are, as I mentioned above, the first one is currency exchange. The next one is providing information for international business. And the last one is providing finance for international business. And now there is a turn to saving banks. 
Saving banks are those banks which collect and keep the small savings of the public. They are called thrift-promoting institutions. The saving banks invest the funds in the safest government securities and offer reasonable rate of profit on saving accounts. Students, government employees and household women are usually opening such accounts. The functions of saving banks are accepting deposits of people for saving and investing the money of people in safe means of investment. The next type of the bank is agriculture bank. Agriculture bank is responsible for the development of agriculture sector of the country. Agriculture banks are set up to provide financial assistance to the agriculturists and agro-based industries. Their functions are providing long-term advances for buying tractors, short-term loan for purchasing seeds and fertilizers, introducing modern techniques in farming, and making awareness in farmers by seminars. The next type of bank is industrial banks. Industrial banks provide medium and long-term credit to the industries. The growth of industries depends on these banks. Their functions are granting loans to set up new companies, long-term loans for machinery and construction of buildings, loans for modernization and replacement of business units, short-term loan for purchase of raw material and payment of daily expenses. In some sources, I found some other types of banks and as you remember, we discussed also at one of our lessons the one type of financial institutions which is called credit unions. But of course, you should know that there is a difference between credit unions of Uzbekistan and credit unions of foreign countries. Credit unions are cooperative, not-for-profit organizations owned by and for its members. The services include low-cost loans to members, services similar to commercial banking services, but at low to no fees. Another type of banks are mutual societies. Mutual societies are owned and run on behalf of members or customers, and their services include traditionally specialized in providing mortgages, now offer many commercial banking services. As we know, the investment banks are very famous in other foreign countries. They specialize in helping large business organizations to raise finance to fund their operations and expansions. The services of investment banks include helping firms raise funds by selling shares on the stock market and advising on company mergers and takeovers. Dear students, today we discuss some types of banks, but as I mentioned above, there are some other types of banks which you can find in internet websites and you can enlarge your knowledge about the banks. So, at the end of my lesson, I will give you some task. The first task is you have to complete the one diagram for commercial banks and the central banks. Make sure you consider the following questions. What are the main functions of the two banks? The second question is, 
What services do they provide and to whom? The next issue is How are they organized, controlled and financed? What are their relationships with other banks in your country and globally? And the last question you have to consider is What role do they play in your economy? Thanks for attention. Goodbye.